Well, the story I'm going to tell you is a folk tale from the Appalachian region of our country. And it's been popularized by the adaptation that uh, uh, Pleasant Despain has made, and he's made it his signature story. This was first written down in 1955, and then it's been around for quite a while. <coughs> Joe bought the land, and it was great. And right next door to him was another farm, and the farmer who brought that land was great as well, and the two became good friends. They talked to each other, they shared ideas about crops, they shared their problems, they had a really great friendship for a long time. Both of them met lovely women and married, and both couples were friends. Both of their families grew, children came, and the children played together. They were really good friends for many, many years. And then as time passed, the children left to, to, to start their own lives, and unfortunately both of those lovely women passed away. So now these older men, these widowers, still were friends and still talked with you and still shared. But one day, for some reason, things changed. There was a stray cat that had wandered into the area, and both of them said, that's my cat. Both of them insisted it was their calf. Both of them got angry with their friend and said, that's my calf, and if you don't like it, I don't want to talk to you anymore. And they turned their backs to each other and they walked away. After years and years of being friends. Well, this went on for a couple weeks. If they saw each other, they would turn around and go the other direction. They did not talk to each other. They carried that anger for two weeks. And then one day, there was a knock on old Joe's door, and he opened the door, and there was a young man with a tools, a, a box of tools that he carried around, and he said, I'm a carpenter, is there anything that you need? Well, old Joe invited the carpenter in, made some stew for him, gave him some tea, sat him down and told him the story, he said, you see, out there, that stream, that creek, that wasn't there recently. My neighbor diverted some water, so it's right on our property line, and that's how he's separating us even more. So what I want you to do is to build a wall. I want you to put a wall up so that I cannot see anything of his ever. And I have everything you'll need in the barn. I have lumber, I have nails, you have your tools. Can you do that for me? And the carpenter said, sure. Joe said, I'm going to go into town. I'm going to spend the day in there doing what I need to do and taking care of things. If you can have this done by the time I get back, that would be great. So off he went. Well, the carpenter went into the barn and got the wood and got the nails, had his tools, measured everything, worked all day long, all day long doing his work. But when old Joe came back, he was surprised because he didn't see a wall. What he saw was a bridge with hand nails, uh, handrails, beautifully done. And there was his neighbor walking across the bridge with a smile on his face and his hand out. And he said, thank you. Thank you so much. I didn't know how to apologize. So thank you so much for building this bridge. And they shook hands, and their friendship was revived. Now, the young carpenter started packing up his tools to head off. And both men said, you know, we have work that you could do for us if you would stay. Um, there's lots that we could have you work on. But the carpenter said, thank you, thank you, no. But I have more build bridges I need to build. <laughs>